So previously we discussed protein sequencing. So we said that if we want to sequence the amino acids in our protein, the first step is to break down that protein into smaller fragments. Once we break it down to smaller fragments by using proteolytic enzymes, we can then isolate the fragments and take the individual small fragment and use Edmund degradation on that fragment to basically determine what that sequence in that smaller fragment is. Now, to actually order the different fragments together to find the correct order of the fragments, we have to use two or more different proteolytic enzymes to produce different sets of fragments. And then we can use the overlapping regions of those fragments in the two different sets to basically determine what that sequence is. Now, to see another example of what we mean, let's take a look at the following example. So, Suppose you purify a protein and that protein consists of seven amino acids. Now your goal is to basically find what the exact sequence of amino acids is in that given protein. And what you do is you expose the protein to two different proteolytic agents, thereby producing two sets of different fragments. So in experiment number one, you take your seven amino polypeptide, you expose it to trypsin. And what trypsin does is it essentially cleaves at the carboxyl end of lysine and arginine. And what you obtain is these three fragments. Then you isolate these fragments and you conduct Edmund degradation on each one of these fragments and you find out that the first fragment is glycine tryptophan arginine, the second fragment is tyrosine lysine, and the third fragment is aspartate and serine. Now you take that same polypeptide and now you expose it to a different proteolytic enzyme, in this case chymotrypsin. Now chymotrypsin cleaves our peptide at the carboxyl end of the bulky and aromatic uh, amino acids, for example tyrosine, phenylalanine and tryptophan as well as methionine and leucine. Now you get three fragments as well and once again you isolate the, th the three fragments and you sequence the amino acids in those three fragments by using the Edmund degradation process and you find that fragment number one is lysine aspartate serine, fragment number two is glycine tryptophan and fragment number three is arginine and tyrosine. So now that you have these six different fragments so you have two sets of fragments, you want to use the overlapping regions of the fragments to basically sequence these fragments in the correct order with respect to one another. So let's begin on this fragment here. So we have glycine, tryptophan, arginine, we have tyrosine, lysine, and aspartate and serine. So we only have a single glycine amino acid in the entire sequence. Now if we look at the second experiment, where does our glycine appear? So the glycine appears in the second fragment here. So this glycine is the same glycine here because we're dealing with the same exact peptide. Now in this case we have glycine, tryptophan, arginine. In this case we only have glycine and tryptophan. So from this sequence this arginine is missing. Now, where does the arginine appear in these other two fragments? So this is our arginine, which is the same arginine as we have here. Now, in this case, nothing is attached onto this arginine, but in this case, we have tyrosine attached to this arginine. So we know that the glycine tryptophan, and then we have arginine, so this must be attached here. And because the tyrosine is attached to our arginine, we have uh, glycine, tryptophan, arginine, tyrosine. Now the next question is, what do we put after tyrosine? Well, let's go back to this diagram here, so, uh, to this experiment number one. So we have tyrosine appearing essentially right over here. And tyrosine, based on experiment one, is attached to lysine. And the only time that lysine appears in this section is right over here. So we conclude that we have glycine tryptophan, then arginine tyrosine, 
and then lysine aspartate serine. So once again, to see how all that works, let's take a look at the following section. So let's actually write our result out. So let's begin with this fragment here. So we have, uh, or actually let's begin with this one. So we have glycine and tryptophan. Let's use, we have um, glycine and then we have tryptophan. Now, to find out what comes next, we have to go to this experiment one. So we have glycine tryptophan, and the only time we have glycine tryptophan here is in this fragment one, glycine tryptophan. Now, this third, uh, this third amino acid basically tells us which fragment must be connected to this one. So we have arginine uh, appears in this fragment and nowhere else. And so that means the next fragment connected to this one is this fragment here. So let's place uh, arginine and tyrosine, the third fragment here. And then <clears throat> we have arginine tyrosine. So we have arginine and the only, uh, the only place where tyrosine appears is here. So we have tyrosine should go here. We have tyrosine lysine and the only time we have tyrosine and lysine or the only time we have lysine in this case is in fragment number one. So we have uh, lysine, then we have aspartate, and we have serine. Now let's place these underneath this row. So we essentially have our glycine tryptophan arginine, which basically appears here. So we have uh, glycine, we have tryptophan, and then we have arginine. Then we have these two fragments. So we have tyrosine lysine and we have tyrosine lysine. So let's put that here. We have tyrosine lysine and the final fragment is aspartate serine, which are these two amino acids here. So aspartate and serine. Okay, so we can piece together these overlapping sections. So let's use, let's say the color green to basically describe the overlapping section. So we have, <clears throat> we have, what do we have here? We have uh, arginine, which is right over here, right? And we have tryptophan, which is right over here. And so there should be a bond right over here. And likewise, we have arginine and tyrosine, right? And arginine and tyrosine, so there should be a bond over here. If we look on this side, we have lysine aspartate, and this is lysine aspartate, so there should be a bond here. And tyrosine lysine tells us that tyrosine lysine, there should be a bond here. So we can piece all this together to basically write down what the final amino acid sequence is. Where is my, uh, in my pocket? Okay, so if we write down the final sequence, we get glycine, tryptophan, then we have a bond here because of these overlapping regions. Uh, so we have arginine, then we have tyrosine, and then based on these overlapping regions here, we have um, tyrosine and lysine are connected, and so then we have aspartate and serine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is our initial seven amino acid polypeptide chain. So this is basically how you, uh, how you sequence the proteins, how you use these different types of proteolytic agents to produce different sets of fragments. And then once you know the actual sequence of these fragments by using Edmund degradation, you can then basically piece the information together by using these overlapping regions of these different fragments. And that's how you sequence proteins.